And now I do have a follow up. We'll circle back to Clomid for just a moment. Is there any, or again, hypothesize as you feel appropriate, any beneficial mechanism of action aside from increasing the LH and FSH? So I, I'm, things I'm thinking of there is maybe the slight increase in SHBG or perhaps even binding some estrogen receptors and antagonizing or agonizing them in testicular tissue. You also asked about SSRIs frequently. Yeah, uh, I get asked about basic, somebody will come in with a drug list being, what should I be on? And uh, that's really tough because some people that come in on SSRIs can't come off of them. Something that they haven't been off of in a decade and it's unclear reasons for why they were started. Maybe they had anxiety around exams. It may be reasonable to see whether or not they can come off of this, but this goes into the whole conversation of balancing the theoretical risk of, um, I think that study was actually looking at testicular development in rats, if I'm not mistaken, with SSRIs, um, but uh, and different methylation signals and testosterone production in the offspring and men who have boys. But, you know, it's difficult because you need to balance the patient and their progeny. If mm -hmm. they can't come off these SSRIs and it's the only way they're going to function, then that's a problem. I run into this more actually with, you know, ejaculatory issues and people being mm -hmm. unable to reach climax because they're on such high doses of SSRIs and then you know, usually I'll call the prescribing physician and the three of us in the same time will have a conversation about, hey, could we brainstorm a way to either change these medications or is this, you know, this is a side effect that really stinks, but the alternative of you having these mood related issues afterwards is way worse than the side effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes more complicated than just switching from Prozac to Trintelix. Right. Yeah. And now I do have a follow up. We'll circle back to Clomid for just a moment. Is there any, or again, hypothesize as you feel appropriate, any beneficial mechanism of action aside from increasing the LH and FSH? So I, I'm, things I'm thinking of there is maybe the slight increase in SHBG or perhaps even binding some estrogen receptors and antagonizing or agonizing them in testicular tissue. Clomid's a dirty drug. Uh, I think that this is going to be very tough to unpack. There was a trial for... N versus zuclomifin a long time ago that mm -hmm. didn't end up getting funding. Um, and, you know, when I'm talking about the two isomers that are in clomid, uh, and clomifin tends to be a more testosterone predominant zuclomifin and estrogen predominant uh, form of the medication, with clomid being more of the estrogenic, estrogenic effects compared to the testosterone effects. You know, this is a very long winded way of me telling you, I don't really know. I do think that there is some benefit to have that increased SHBG, but. The other thing we know is that the testosterone to estrogen ratio, and again, this is based on clinical data, shows that men with a testosterone to estrogen light ratio of less than 10 to 1 tend to have an increased risk of infertility, decreased success with assisted reproductive technologies. So while there may be some benefits to SHBG, I think the negatives of having this potential hyperestrogenemia could outweigh that. So again, very important to not only follow the FSH, LH, but I also follow the testosterone, the estrogen, and the ratio between the two of them. Uh, and I, I don't know the answer to this question. Um, I don't know if there is one, but do you know if Clomid is specifically an antagonist or antagonist in testicular tissue? I don't know. I know it's not mapped out very well in the body. I, I don't mm -hmm. know. I mean, really, again, it typically affects the estrogen receptors, and I admittedly can't tell you what that looks like uh, you know, on the Sertoli cells, which is probably where we need to look at them. Could also be different on Sertoli cells and Leydig cells. I know that some serms like raloxifene, even in the prostate, they can uh, be an agonist and an antagonist at, say, the alpha receptors, but antagonist at the uh, different at the beta receptor and different at the other estrogen related receptors. And I don't think we even know if most serms bind to the membrane estrogen receptor. So uh, it is certainly complicated. The androgen receptor is nice because as far as we know, there's only one of them, but there's so many different estrogen receptors. Um, quick question on that. Is there an estradiol level that is so low or so high to where males should consider measuring a sensitive estradiol level if they want to be very accurate with it? Yeah, I mean, one of the problems with this is that we're usually looking for downstream consequences of these perturbations in estrogen, you know, low levels, we're looking for things like fractures. Uh, people can actually have sexual dysfunction when their estrogen is too low. 
you know, anytime I get something back that's less than 15 or less than 12, depending on what lab I, I send it to, if the person's asymptomatic, I usually don't go off and send a further test. Likewise, if it's, you know, above 35 or 40, they don't have any development of breast tissue, they don't have any symptoms or having fertility problems, I usually don't go ahead and check it. There's definitely some theoretical concern of venothrombolic events. You know, there's that recent randomized controlled trial in the New England Journal last year looking at just the safety of testosterone in general from a cardiovascular standpoint. Yep. And, uh, you know, you guys have probably delved into the data before of this. Um, none of the adverse effects other than the predetermined cardiovascular ones were pre-powered, but there was a slight increase in thromboembolic events when you looked at pulmonary embolus. And again, some of the questions surrounding that are why, and some people think it may be due to this increase in estrogen. So maybe, maybe it is something that we do need to be more mindful of. We have reasonable data in the female population with, you know, uh, estrogen replacement, systemic estrogen replacement. And maybe this is something that we're, we're not doing a good job of mm -hmm. diagnosing in men. But I, I don't have yep. thresholds because I don't do it. Mm -hmm.